All right, we are shifting gears only slightly from the gridiron to code. Uh, we've been talking about AI in action all day. Java has been a critical platform for cloud native applications. So we're gonna look also at how it will help with AI. And I'm joined now by George Saab, the Senior Vice President of Development of the Java platform to talk about what's new and what's next. Thank you as always for joining me. Thank you, Fritz. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. All right, well, congratulations on the release of Java 25 in September, was it? That's right, in September. Okay, and uh, for the developers in our audience, what are some of the key themes and innovations in Java 25? Yeah, so as you'll recall, uh, we made a transition a few years ago after Java 9 to start doing releases every six months. Yep. So we're now on the 16th six-month release. <laughs> And the nice thing is, this means that there's more new stuff coming out and innovation being put in the hands of developers more frequently. Um, so for, for this release in particular, there were 18 uh, JDK enhancement proposals. This basically means a major feature that was added. Uh, but in addition to that, there were thousands of smaller improvements, fixes, uh, enhancements. I mean, it's the, there's lots and lots of content there. And so, you know, for the developers, this means they're getting new things in a number of different areas. One area that we focused on a lot is improving the language, so making the syntax you know, better, more expressive, but also more accessible for people who are new to programming or to programming in Java. Secondly, uh, we have a lot of, import of, of improvements to the runtime, making performance better, making garbage collector, this kind of thing, and also improving scalability. Because you know, the problems of today, we need to be able to bring to bear on the cloud in a distributed fashion. And so Java really is the best technology to help you with that. Um, and then, you know, finally, we had a very nice thing added from something called Project Leiden, which is working on making startup better, startup faster, and warm up, that is to say, until you're going, you know, at full speed, make, sort of reducing that time. And that's really good for things like microservices. So developers are really excited about this and are picking it up quickly. Got it, okay, that is a lot. <laughs> um, so wait, so 16 releases since you started doing, that's the six quite, month releases, you, yeah. you used to the pace by now. Then. Yeah, eight okay. years. Okay, okay. Yeah. all right, good. Um, and so what about for maybe non-technical folks? Uh, Java 25 is a version of that Oracle's offering long-term support for Correct. because of this. That's right. This increment in versions. What should a business leaders know about this? Yeah. Release? So exactly as you say, when we moved to the faster releases, we realized developers wanted that, but you know, businesses don't necessarily like change all the time. Right. They like some stability. They want to be secure. So it's really important that they're getting a regular cadence of fixes for security issues, sometimes improving stability and performance as well. And we actually do those updates four times a year and release simultaneously the fixes that affect different releases. Um, and so basically every two years, we call one of those six month releases out for receiving long-term support. 25 is the newest one of these. So you're gonna see years and years of support for this version that you know businesses can just rely on. Uh, it's great. Yeah, and, and, and Java, there's a lot to Java. We've talked about it in the past, but I wanna just have you briefly explain the difference between the Java language, the Java platform, and the Java, sure. Java ecosystem. Yeah, as you say, there's a lot there. And Java is actually something that is very, very formally specified. So we have a specification for the language. That's to say, you know, when I write Java code, what is it? What's the syntax? What is sort of legal to express? And how does it have to look? Um, but we also have a spec for the Java virtual machine. And that is the thing that at runtime takes that Java code, you've already compiled it, and then it will actually uh, produce native code for whatever platform you happen to be on. And this means that you know, the promise of write once, run anywhere is truly there. Because your code is high level and you don't even know necessarily when you've written it what cloud it's going to run on, what CPUs, maybe it's going to run on GPUs. And all of that is important. Now, um, many of Oracle's customers have adopted a cloud first approach and they're embracing cloud native development. How does right. Java 25 help them with that? Well, you know, interestingly, um, and you know, I, I think there are probably people who would have like rolled their eyes if you had said this, you know, eight or 10 years ago, but a recent study by VDC showed that Java is number one for cloud native deployments. 
right? So, you know, whatever cloud you're out there looking at, you know, Java is one of the main things that people are, are using there. I, I think there are a lot of reasons for this, you know, no, having that flexibility of late binding on where you're going to run is one, but also Java has a, an unparalleled story for observability. And of course, when you're running in the cloud, you need to figure out what's happening, right? What's happening at runtime? If there are issues, how can you fix them? Um, and Java gives you Java Flight Recorder, um, the Java Management Service, and other things that help with that. What about for multi-cloud support? Yeah, well, I think it's true there as well, right? Because when you're writing in Java, you're typically writing at a very high level, right? So you're not really sort of pinning things to one particular environment, right? It tends to be flexible, able to be moved around, et cetera. Okay, let's jump to AI. Okay. How is Java 25 helping developers build AI capabilities into their software? Great question. Uh, and of course, you know, this is an area that's very interesting and important for us. When we think of AI, we really think of a few different things. So first of all, there's generative AI, like making, you know, generating code suggestions. Secondly, um, there's large uh, language model inference, so actually integrating it into your business applications in some right. way. Um, and then, you know, finally, there's sort of model training and deployment. And we're interested in all of these. We think that you know, Java is great for Gen AI because of its type safety, because of the formal spec, and because there's such a massive ecosystem out there. There's tons of code to train models on. Okay, so when we look at, uh, at, at um, uh, inference, what about that? Well, it turns out there are a lot of the most popular frameworks out there and libraries are really kind of embracing Java. So we th see things like Spring AI, we see things like Langchain for J. We see things like Embabel for Agentic AI, uh, which is a, a brand new one. And also, even Helidon uh, from Oracle you know, has built-in capabilities for AI and MCP. And then, you know, finally, we're looking at, at the lowest level. What can we do to make Java the ideal platform for model training and deployment? So here we've had you know, some projects that have been delivering in the past few releases, like Panama, basically in, uh, improving the story of calling native code. Uh, that, is doing kind of the same trick that Python does. But then we're also working on things that let you actually do everything directly in Java. We have Project Valhalla, which is you know, really coming very close now to uh, seeing some things coming out of there, letting you have lots and lots of data in memory in Java, um, and using the things like you know, garbage collection that, that helps with that. And finally, we have a project called Babylon, which I'm really excited about. This is basically letting you write your algorithms in Java, but then converting those to low-level code that can run natively on a distributed GPU farm oh, wow. or other place. So I think you know, the promise of write once, run anywhere is going to apply there too, because as we've seen, we know what GPUs we have today. We don't know how they're going to look necessarily in six months or a year or two years, and we want to be prepared for that and not have to rewrite our Java workloads every time that happens. Okay, well, we are out of time, unfortunately. Where can people go to learn more about not just Java 25, but come see you guys and yeah. talk to you. You can come and see us in the booth. We have a number of talks that we've been giving and panels. Um, and then uh, one area I would recommend, there's dev.java, which is a site that's for Java developers by Java developers, including a playground where you can try out new, uh, new things. Um, and then the other thing I'd mention is our YouTube channel, which is fantastic and has you know, great, great videos by uh, the DevRel team on my site. Absolutely, thank you so much. George. Absolutely, thank you, Fritz.